Cardigan Bay, West Wales, is home to the largest of the two remaining semi-resident bottlenose dolphin populations found off the British mainland. Here, they are seen regularly. The other main population is in the Moray Firth in Scotland, while a smaller group can be spotted off the south coast of England. Cardigan Bay's bottlenose dolphins are of international importance and seen most often from April through to November, usually in small groups of 1 to 15. Out on our boat trips and people see dolphins, they get really excited. You'd be measured, and especially if the animals do approach the boat, um, you get this big wild animal, maybe 14 foot long, burst out of the water right next to the boat, and people just get blown away by it. They're so excited. They are some of the largest bottlenose dolphins in the world, reaching up to four meters in length, weighing up to 650 kilograms, and living for as long as 40 to 50 years. Often recognised as the stereotypical dolphin with their prominent nose or beak giving them their bottlenose name, their sickle-shaped dorsal fins, their leaps out of the water, called breaching, and their tail slapping. What's that all about? This slapping may be an individual advertising its size, strength or displaying irritation. It could be used to herd fish or as a form of communication. The leaping, sometimes several metres in the air, can be used to gain speed during fish chases or during social interactions, including fighting. Dolphins can fight viciously, and leaps could be to avoid attackers or land on adversaries or competitors. Bottlenose in Cardigan Bay are also known to attack harbour porpoises in an act known as porpoiseide. By far the most uh, number of strandings that we get are harbour porpoises on the Welsh coast. In Cardigan Bay, the major cause of death is being killed by bottlenose dolphins. A huge difference in size between a, a porpoise and a, a bottlenose dolphin. I mean, it's a bit one-sided. And not only that, they've been observed where you've had two or three bottlenose dolphins attacking one porpoise. Uh, and they'll ram them, um, breaking ribs and bursting internal organs, and it's quite severe. Bottlenose dolphins live in groups of varying size, communicating in several ways, through physical contact, body language, and by producing clicks and whistles. So dolphins produce uh, three main types of vocalisation. We have sonar, which is also known as echolocation clicks, and dolphins use sonar to find food and to navigate their environment. They also produce uh, burst pulse sounds, which they can use um, as a form of communication. And they also produce whistles, which are a, also used in social communication. And they produce a whole variety of whistles. Uh, and that's also how they encode information such as identity. So each dolphin has its own signature whistle that it uses to broadcast its identity. So dolphins aren't born with their signature whistle but they develop them in the first year of life. Typically, dolphins produce whistles in the, frequency, uh, in the frequency range that humans can hear well, so up to 22 kilohertz. And the dolphins in Cardigan Bay produce whistles at much higher frequencies than that in the ultrasonic range. So we can't actually hear them, but we can record them using our underwater microphones. And that means that the, the whistle repertoire, the whistles that the dolphins produce in Cardigan Bay, are really distinctive, it appears, to that population. So here we can t see two signature whistles. This one here, the slightly straighter one, is from one individual, and then the wiggly line below will be from a different individual. And I can play these, and you may be able to hear the difference very clearly. We can also learn what the individuals are using an area for by using acoustics. We can infer aspects of their behaviour. So, for example, dolphins produce certain types of vocalisations when they're foraging. This includes echolocation clicks and also bray calls, which are more like burst pulse sounds um, and they sound a bit more like a donkey bray. But this communication and foraging activity can be disrupted by the ambient noise from motorboats and other craft in the water, 
which is why it's important to give dolphins space for their daily activities. So it's really important that we monitor noise levels around the bay because ultimately that does impact uh, dolphin behaviour. So which areas are important for their, for their foraging? And where do we see the loudest uh, levels of anthropogenic noise? Uh, and by understanding that, we can perhaps um, offer more protection to the population by ensuring that certain noise um, or certain anthropogenic noise sources do not occur in areas that are particularly important for bottlenose dolphin foraging. Dolphins are a good example of how mammals, who returned to the sea 60 million years ago, have adapted so perfectly. What remains of their hind legs are hidden below layers of streamlined blubber. Their skin, up to 20 times thicker than land mammals, may seem smooth, but is in fact made up of many small folds, which reduces water turbulence. This, combined with their torpedo-shaped bodies, means they have evolved to glide effortlessly through the water, powered by a muscular tail. Cardigan Bay is an important nursery ground for bottlenose dolphins, with regular sightings of mother and calf pairings. Most mature females give birth to a single calf every three years, and at any time, although there's a slight peak in numbers from July to September. Newborn calves are much paler and have distinct lines called fetal folds down their sides. These gradually fade as they age, usually by the time they're 9 to 12 months old. Individual bottlenose dolphins can be identified through unique markings, notches, scars or blemishes on their dorsal fins. These can be photographed and subsequently used to identify and catalogue each individual. Since the mid-1990s, researchers from the Cardigan Bay Marine Wildlife Centre have been collecting photographs of bottlenose dolphin dorsal fins, identifying over 250 individuals. This photo ID catalogue provides valuable data on individual dolphins' habitats, home range, movements around Cardigan Bay and the wider Irish Sea, as well as information on the social structure of the population. If the data is collected frequently enough, it can help assess the health of the population. One of the first to be identified was Top Notch. First seen in the early 1990s and last recorded in Cardigan Bay in 2011. In 2009, she was spotted twice within 48 hours, more than 100 miles apart. Photo identification images provides us with a sort of wealth of information, natural history information about individual animals. So, um, about who they're hanging out with, um, areas that they're using. Um, how they're moving throughout, um, throughout Cardigan Bay or maybe further afield. So through photo identification, it's a very powerful technique of finding out about individuals, but you can only find out so much about them. Um, it's quite difficult to sex animals, so therefore interpreting the behaviour that you see when you're out in the field can be difficult. Because if you knew whether they were male or female, or whether they were related, might um, change how you interpret the behaviour that you're seeing. So there's an awful lot of information that we've yet to gather from the population here and it's really important that we're able to do that so that we can effectively manage them and conserve them for, for the future of the population as a whole. I think a missing piece um, to the puzzle right now is the social structure of the bottlenose dolphins in Cardigan Bay. Um, do we have stable social relationships between individuals? Uh, do we have individuals that prefer to spend time with others or even avoid others? And in some populations, we already have this information. Bottlenose dolphins are opportunistic feeders. They can adapt their feeding behaviour to local conditions, circumstances and food sources. In Cardigan Bay, they have been observed feeding on fish such as mullet, bass, salmon, seawin, mackerel and garfish, and also believed to spend time looking for bottom-dwelling fish, squid and crustaceans. The best places for spotting bottlenose dolphins in Cardigan Bay are Aber Dovey, Aber Astwith, Newquay, Ynys Lochtin, Aber Porth and Munt. And the dolphin watching industry has grown immensely since the early 2000s. A number of boat trip operators run marine wildlife watching tours, with Newquay and the surrounding area being a hub for this tourism. Here, Dolphin Survey Boat Trips is the original ecotour 
which helps support the research work of the Cardigan Bay Marine Wildlife Centre. Researchers join boat trips to collect data. It's, it's really valuable to the local tourist industry. I mean, any of the cafes and the ice cream shops will tell you that when the boats are busy, uh, their shops are busy. We attract a lot of people into the area. It's a double-edged sword. In one way, it's great that we're raising awareness of the amazing wildlife that we have here in Cardigan Bay, and especially in this immediate area. But the downside to this is there's a lot of uh, possible side effects, a lot of boat disturbance, a lot of attention on the animals, on all the wildlife, and this needs to be controlled, otherwise it's going to have a detrimental effect. And is, I think it already is having a detrimental effect. I believe we can only truly protect the wildlife we have here if we all work together. So that means boat operators, the council, different wildlife organisations, the government, all working together to protect what we've got here. And that, not only would that protect the wildlife that we have here, that, that would also protect the jobs and the industry that we have here. Cardigan Bay is one of the last remaining havens for the dolphins. Possibly because it's relatively free of intense fishing and there's little commercial activity in terms of oil exploration and energy developments. Although there's always an ongoing threat of these. The main dangers to these beautiful creatures are pollution, including PCBs, plastics which build up in their body, disturbance from boats and other human activities. But we still know comparatively little about the Cardigan Bay bottlenose dolphins, so funding for research is crucially important for their survival. So if you are lucky enough to be able to enjoy a dolphin spectacle, please remember you are entering their world. They are wild animals. Give them space, watch from a distance, and make as little noise as possible above and below the surface of the water. Coming up ahead. Please help us to conserve and protect these animals and one of the last homes of the British bottlenose dolphin.